12 days ago, the last place Larry Howlett was seen was sitting around this fire. Now his loved ones believe he may be in the Shell Rock River. We took the report. We did some investigation at the time. We went to the camper that he was staying in. Uh, we've had the Iowa DNR uh, float the river. If this was a 19-year-old female college student gone on a weekend camping trip, missing, we wouldn't have waited 12 days to get a response from the sheriff's department. A sad and unfortunate truth from one of the friends of missing person, Larry Howlett. He's a man that supposedly was just camping at the side of a lake and disappeared. There's some big questions I have about this case. It's a recent case. We're talking only a few weeks ago that this occurred. Is there something we can do to help his friends and family find the answers they're looking for? It's time to turn on the searchlight. Hey everyone, John Lorden here. Thank you so much for joining me on another episode of Brain Scratch Searchlight. Today we're looking into the case of Lawrence Eugene Howlett, also known as Larry, and this is a photo of him. He's been missing since June 1st, 2019, so this is a very recent case. We don't have a whole lot of details, but I've got a couple of very big questions with the details that we do have. Let's go ahead and start on this. Uh, over at wikipedia.com, we're going to learn about Mason City, Iowa. This is where the disappearance took place, though Larry is actually from a town called Sandwich in the state of Illinois. Mason City is a city in and the county seat of Cerro Gordo County, Iowa, United States. The population was 28,079 in the 2010 census. It is commonly referred to as the River City as the city grew up centered on the Winnebago River. Now, that's one of the troubling aspects of this case. We have his disappearance literally happen right next to a river. Um, if you've watched this channel for a while, you know that we have very bad outcomes frequently when a person goes missing around a body of water. But this case, there's some considerations we have here that are making me think twice about that quick conclusion that we sometimes make in cases like this. So I'll share those with you as we go along here. But here is a poster. Unfortunately, there is no NamUs profile built for him yet. I don't know if one has been entered and it just hasn't been turned public yet. So I'm going to keep an eye on it. Um, of course, if I don't see it activate in the next few weeks, I'm going to go ahead and start one myself for Larry. Missing Larry Lawrence Howlett, age 48, missing from Cerro Gordo County, Iowa, since now here they have it listed as June 8th, 2019. From what I understand, that's actually the time that it was reported as a missing person, but it was a week before that that he went missing. Date of birth, May 27th, 1971. Height, five foot five. Weight, 160 pounds. He has brown hair that is graying. Uh, on his eyes, they say they are green. His race is white. For clothing, we have a description of blue jeans, a gray tank top, and tan work boots. And I've seen some people describe the tan work boots as newer. He also has several tattoos on his arms and upper arms. We're going to get a bit of a better uh, detail on that later. Larry went missing from Camp at the Woods, located at 22,000 Falls Park Drive, northwest of Rock Falls, Iowa. Rock Falls is a much smaller town, uh, literally population, just over 100 people. Um, but the, the point that he went in at, at, at Camp at the Woods, is actually in the town that we started this with, Mason City, Iowa. Uh, let's go ahead and continue to KTTC.com and get some details. Lawrence Hollett, 48, from Sandwich, Illinois, was reported missing the morning of Saturday, June 8th. He goes by Larry. According to the Cerro Gordo County Sheriff's Office, he was last seen Saturday, June 1st at about 10 p.m. near his camper on the Shell Rock River. And that brings up the first of the questions that I have and one of the issues that I have with this case so far. We have him supposedly go missing June 1st. Why is it not reported that he's missing to the authorities for a full week? 
Um, that always makes me suspicious. I'm always wondering what the delay is in that. Sometimes we do hear family members that go and try to report someone missing and they're told you can't do that for 24 or 48 hours. Uh, we know that in many cases that is not true, but family members hear that time and time again. But here, where we see it's an entire week before that missing persons report is actually filed, I'm just wondering what are the conditions of that? Did people not notice he was missing? Uh, as we get into the details, it doesn't seem like that's likely, so I have to wonder if there's something else at play here. Uh, in terms of the tattoo description, and you can actually see a few of them in this photo here. He's got a Superman logo at the top of his left shoulder, just below that a Batman logo. He has the name Bailey tattooed on his left arm and Chantal on his right arm. And from what I understand, those are his daughters. He is also a father. And of course, we have two young women wondering where their father is. Uh, let's take a look at where the disappearance happened. This is Camp at the Woods. Uh, we can see it's right next to what is known as the Shell Rock River. And uh, Rock Falls is down here. Unfortunately, there are no street views available here except for kind of on this highway. That's It's just too far away from this area to be useful. None of the streets that are close to the actual campsite uh, have a street view option. So we're gonna go with the satellite and just type of, uh, just kind of drill in as, as far as we can. But we see Shell Rock River, um, there's a pretty good bend that happens in it around the campsite here. And it continues um, miles and miles south of this location, uh, which also might be important. We're going to touch on that by the time we hit the end of this video as well. In terms of Facebook information, what can we fill in here? Um, first, let's take a look at Larry's page. And the first thing I wanted to show you guys was his look can change pretty drastically. Um, here we've got him uh, with a beard and with long hair. I believe he's dying the color of his hair in these pictures. Um, we've got him not dying his hair. And you can see over here, his beard starts showing very gray. There are photos where his hair is cut short and photos where his head is even shaved. Um, here's a photo where his hair is just a little bit longer on top. Many different looks for this man, so that's why I wanted to pull these photos up and make sure that all of you um, were able to see those as well. But just looking through his Facebook, I can tell you he seems like a father that is uh, got a little bit of an edgy sense of humor. Um, but here is some, some interesting posts. Here we have May 27th, 2019. So we're talking just a matter of days before he goes missing. Thank you everyone for the birthday wishes. So we have a birthday that happens. Um, we then have him travel and it seems like he was traveling for work. But on May 29th, we get another post. Bus rides are always exciting. The guy across from me died 15 minutes after we left Chicago. I told the bus driver at two different stops, but he ignored me. Finally, six hours later, when everyone but the dead guy on the floor between the seats got off the bus, the driver realized I wasn't joking. Hell of a way to take your last ride. And here he actually has a photo of the body being carried off the bus. Kind of strange to have that type of occurrence. And then just a few days later, um, he is missing himself. And here is his last post. This is from May 31st, obviously, the day before he goes missing. After all this time, I still miss you every day. And it looks like it's kind of a digital love card to someone. He then says the initials PMD with an exclamation point. Um, someone on Web Sleuths did point out that PMD could be the initials of someone. And if you look in a certain place, you can figure out who that person is. I looked at her Facebook page as well. Interestingly, just about three hours before he makes this post, she changed her profile photo to a photo of her and a man. Now, I, I'm assuming that it could be a new boyfriend of hers. I'm not sure. Um, could that be some trigger in all of this with him disappearing? I have no idea. I'm just trying to let you guys know the details that I've found that are uh, happening around his disappearance. Let's continue over at KIMT.com. His friend, Kevin Teckenbrock tells KIMT News 3 that Howlett was sitting around a bonfire with friends the night he went missing. Everyone went to bed, and the last time Howlett was seen was 9.30 that night. Teckenbrock believes his friend may have slipped into the river. 
I hate to say it, but after 12 days of missing, no cell phone use, no contact from him, they're really now just looking for a body and closure for the family. Um, so let me just first call out Kevin has been working very hard trying to find his friend. He's been traveling there. He's been doing numerous searches, trying to get some citizens to help him in terms of searching. Thankfully, some people are showing up to help him with the searches. Like I mentioned before, family and friends frustrated with law enforcement. Uh, I know law enforcement did get uh, someone to go out on the river, but I don't think they actually have been dragging the river. And that seems to be what law, what family are really looking for with the investigation at this point. Personally, I don't know. Uh, I, I know it's very common for bodies to be located floating. Uh, from what I understand, there's only a pretty tight period of time, very near um, to after the death, that a body will sink if uh, enough water is taken on. But then the body starts creating gases and it usually comes back up unless something is keeping it down. So if it's intentionally weighed down by something or if it's moved along to an area where it might have gotten stuck. Um, Kevin, in his searches, he's been doing Facebook Live videos and I've watched several of them. And he comments at one point that he's seeing a lot of people around the river, kind of recreational uh, use of the river. So that's one thing I think that's actually working for us in this case, because typically those are the people at least that I've seen in the previous cases I've covered, that will find the body or will notice, hey, there's something floating over there and, and make the discovery. So this isn't an area that isn't used too often and maybe we're just missing it. This seems to be an area where there's a, a considerable amount of recreational use for a town of that size. Um, and we're, we haven't heard that discovery yet. So it really has me wondering. And then, of course, we get the details here that are really boggling my mind. He's sitting around the bonfire with friends the night he goes missing. This almost reminds me a little bit of the Madison Scott case. Uh, his friends go to bed and they just see him sitting out by the water around 930 that night and that's it. Now, maybe, possibly, especially uh, with the situation Kevin's describing where he thinks that his friend could have just slipped into the water. Um, by the way, in some other videos I was seeing, someone did mention that Larry might have not uh, known how to swim. But I find that interesting, too, because in the picture that we've seen circulated of him, he's sitting on an inner tube. Not that it means you need to know how to swim to do that, but just if I didn't know how to swim, I wouldn't necessarily be sitting on the water. Um, but... If, if these friends were sitting around with him the night before and he goes missing, they had to notice that he was gone the next day. In particular, I think some of these friends might have been people that were working with him on the job that he was out there working at. So once again, why does it take a week for this to get reported? I don't know. I'm very curious about what was going on that night with all the friends sitting around. Um, who's the last person to specifically see him? Uh, was there alcohol involved? Was there something else involved? I think there's a lot of details here that can help give a better understanding to the case. Unfortunately, they're not available publicly at this time. Uh, moving over to another article at KIMT. James Thigh has been working alongside Howlett in subcontract work in Mason City and has allowed Howlett to stay with him at the campground. He describes Howlett as a very sociable person who has been visiting with some people around the campground. He's very likable. He's very sociable. He's met a lot of friends here, and everybody seemed to like him. Thai has been trying to find him and staying in contact with Hallett's family and law enforcement, as well as getting the message out there. I was informed this morning that a female officer traveled the river road and stopped at openings to look and see if she could find Larry, and she called me asking if I had any more ideas where they might look for him. I really don't have any more ideas. Once again, it's just really thumping this question into my head, and that's why I'm giving it back to you guys. He's friendly. He's sociable. People seem to like him. He goes missing, and there's a week before law enforcement is contacted. When did James start contacting the family exactly? I understand that he's in contact with them and law enforcement now, but was that a week after when it was reported as, as a missing person? Was it even later than that? Um, I would really love to get some more detail from James here, but unfortunately, we don't have it. Can we learn some more from Facebook? 
jumping over to the Missing Persons Network, uh, they put out a post about this case, and then someone named Misty Warren replied. I believe she's Larry's sister. He was staying in his boss's camper. He was there for work. Just little pid- tidbits of details that I'm getting here. Uh, Jody Lee, who I believe is another sister of Larry's. Larry was a- always usually wearing a St. Louis Cardinals hat, either his blue or green one. So I just wanted to put that out there that on top of the clothing description, he might have been wearing a hat. And the missing poster does show a St. Louis hat. Uh, that's his blue one, obviously, there. And on another Facebook page, another post from Misty to the, the Cerro Gordo County Sheriff. Um, we had all the faith in the world that your team was doing everything possible to help us bring home my brother, only to spread the word and conduct our own interviews to find out that no search has been done because, quote, it's not necessary. The river has not been dragged because, quote, it's not necessary. And what about the pit that was checked, question mark? Nope. If this was your brother or relative, wouldn't you want all possible measures done? I thought so. So I've talked about this a lot on this channel. This is one of the toughest aspects of missing persons cases. Um, Families do get upset with law enforcement, but typically I don't see it happen this early. Usually it's a month or two months later, and then it feels like things are slowing down and they're not being as helpful. And then the family's anxiety and anger will kind of ramp up. Here, it is happening fairly quickly. We're only a few weeks into this case at this point. So I'm concerned um, because first of all, in any missing persons case, you want to put a team together. You want to bring people together to try to find the answers that you're looking for. But I'm really concerned in what she's saying about this quote, it's not necessary. And I've seen other family members kind of talk about this quote as well. Uh, I don't know who said that, to the family. Um, We know that not all of these departments, these law enforcement departments are huge. And sometimes their training can vary, especially in terms of how they interact with people in this situation. It seems like a kind of insensitive statement. Um, Is it being taken out of context? I don't think so. I think it's just... um, I don't know. I'd love to know more behind it. What was the rest of this conversation and what did they mean by it's not necessary? Are they saying that if he did pass away and is in the river, that it's not necessary to drag it because at some point we're going to find him? Um, I, I just, I don't get the the context of it, but obviously uh, Larry's sister, Misty, very, very upset and hurt by that. Here we can see his sister Jody with a similar comment. Why won't they do a search or drag the river for my brother? It's been too long. Why do I get told it's not necessary? So there it is once again. Now, Kevin has a Facebook page, and his Facebook page has basically turned into a search for Larry Howlett page. Uh, once again, Kevin, my hat's off to you. I just, it's hard to look into these stories. One of the bright spots for me is finding good people that are trying to help the families in these cases. And Kevin is definitely that person. And he's struggling even with that. There's a post here that I was really touched by uh, about how frustrated he was and feeling like he wasn't really being all that helpful, despite everyone telling him how amazing it is that he's doing all this. Uh, a post that he just made only 23 hours ago, this, I'm telling you, this guy's on the case. He's working as hard as he can on it. He's showing a dam that he says is five miles away from the campsite. Uh, it's where all the water is flowing. And there's a catch there that he believes uh, would stop anything from going beyond to uh, the actual dam point. So um, I think he's raising a good point. And once again, it's making me wonder about the possibility that Larry might not actually be in the water. If we do have it flowing in that direction, if it's a pretty strong current, um, I think there's a good chance he would get to this point. I've seen cases before where we've had bodies travel that considerable amount of distance. Uh, Of course, we do have to take into account things in the water that we can't see, obstacles, rocks, um, you know, just pieces of fallen trees, all kinds of different stuff that could hang someone up. Um, But I think that's part of the reason why we're seeing this frustration point coming from the family in terms of them doing a better search in the water. Uh, I have seen no mention of any divers being 
in the water, um, even sonar searching. I know there's people that will even take like their fish detectors out there, uh, citizens that will do this just to try to help look for people. Um, I really haven't seen too much mention of that either. So to me, does it feel like there are other steps that could be taken in this case? Yes. Uh, is it a matter of resources? I don't know. We never know what law enforcement is really considering in terms of cases like this. They might have information that tells them this is a foul play scenario and they already know or have an idea that he's not in the water for some particular reason. And maybe that's why they can make a comment like it's not necessary, but then not follow it up with the actual facts that they know that are leading them to that conclusion. So. It's a really tough spot to be in. I don't envy either side. And once again, I just really hope in particular, if any of Larry's family sees this, um, please try to pull those sides together. It's your best bet at finding Larry. And you can still be critical, you can still be vocal, um, but there's still a way to do that while working together. I've seen it, it's, it's much more rare. Um, but if you can get to that, it's kind of a sweet spot for cases like this. You can still apply pressure, there's there's just a certain way of phrasing things to bring those two sides together. Um, and I, I really hope that can happen here. So they did start a GoFundMe. Specifically, his friend Kevin started this. You know, the guy has been traveling a lot back and forth, um, spending money on flyers. He's doing a great job putting flyers up. Uh, so he went for a $500 goal. It has been funded. I was considering giving more to it, but then... On Larry's page, I found something interesting. This is a post from May 13th, just leading up to his most recent birthday. For my birthday this year, I'm asking for donations to American Cancer Society. I've chosen this nonprofit because their mission means a lot to me, and I hope you'll consider contributing as a way to celebrate with me. Every little bit will help me reach my goal. I've included information about American Cancer Society below. Uh, and if you click on it, it takes you to the page that he had set up. He wanted to raise $50 and it didn't happen. Um, we're gonna make that happen just as soon as I'm done filming this episode in honor of Larry. Um, and I'm not saying that Larry isn't with us anymore. I just, I don't know where he is, but in honor of the search for him, we're going to make the donation and hit that goal that he was trying to do. I thought it was a really reasonable goal, um, $50. So. Thank you once again to my amazing supporters on PayPal and Patreon for helping me do things like this. I truly appreciate that. We do have a Web Sleuths post on this uh, or a um, forum on this. There's only a few, a handful of posts here, uh, but I'll have that in the description box down below. Once again, I'll keep an eye on NamUs. If I don't see him pop up in here within a few weeks to a month, I'm going to get that done myself um, because we need to make sure he's in there. Uh, just in case, you know, that's, it's, it's so important to be in NamUs nowadays, especially with all the John Doe cases that we have. NamUs is the way to solve those cases. If we have the missing persons record and the John Doe record in the same system, we've got a really good chance at making that connection and letting families know what has happened to their loved one. So here's the questions I'm stuck with brain scratchers. Um, is he really in the water or not? Now, knowing that he couldn't swim, would he have been more careful around that? We don't know the conditions of that night. Could there have been alcohol or something else involved that impaired his judgment? It's possible. We've certainly seen that happen in cases before. But if Kevin's right about the catch that happens uh, before the, the dam, then I think there's a pretty good chance that we would have seen that. On top of that, just the logistics of having a body in water and how often we see um, people that are doing recreational things around bodies of water find uh, these loved ones. We're not seeing that in this case. And within this time period that we're in right now, I kind of feel like we would have seen that. So I'm really struggling with the thought that he's in the water at all. What I'm really concerned about is that week. Why is that week gap there? Why do we have people that were there the night, his, the last night anyone knew where he was talking about him and what a great sociable guy he is, but we don't have a missing persons report filed for a week? I'm just very concerned about that time frame. I want more detail about what happened on that night. What was he talking about? Was he depressed? Was he depressed about his um, an ex-girlfriend just finding a new boyfriend? Uh, was there something else going on? Even with the Cancer Society thing, was that potentially pointing to something that uh, has 
affected him recently? Has he had a scrape with cancer, maybe himself or within his family? Um, I'd be very, very curious to know what the conversation was like that night that he went missing. Was there an argument with anyone? That would be very important in a case like this so we can understand if there's more potential for a foul play scenario. But that's where I'm going to leave it with you guys. Let me know your thoughts and theories in the comments below. And I just want to say my heart goes out to Larry, especially his two daughters. Um, I just, I can't imagine going through something like this where your father is going off to a job and all of a sudden disappears like that. I just, um, it's gotta be super, super difficult. I know his sisters are struggling as well. I'm sure there are many more family members out there uh, and friends. And once again, my hat's off to Kevin and um, don't give up, Kevin, don't give up, please. Uh, you've done such amazing work. Don't let how heavy this is weigh you down too much. Um, there's, a, there's a balance you can strike where you can still be helping this case, taking care of yourself, and making all of that work together. Um, I know it's it's tough. As a matter of fact, Kevin, if you need to talk to me, you can email me at john at lordandarts.com, J-O-H-N at lordandarts, just like it's spelled in the channel name down below, dot com. I would certainly appreciate being able to talk to you and be able to share anything I could in terms of helping you and to just thank you for all your, all your work on this so far. All right, before I sign off today, I have to thank a few new patrons. Thank you, Chelsea, and thank you, Maddie Bett. Hope I'm saying that right, Maddie. On top of that, we had several people increase their pledges. Melissa Romandy, Gwen Berenger, M. Locking, Katie Bragg, and Denisa Henkel. And you guys, I really need the help, and I really, really appreciate that you're stepping up in terms of Patreon and PayPal support. Um, YouTube is demonetizing shows like crazy. I'd say within the past three weeks, a third of my videos have been demonetized. It's not making any sense to me anymore. It's searchlight cases. It's case cracked episodes. I, I can't get my head around what the triggers are. Uh, it's really frustrating, but thank you for being there. Thank you for giving me that support um, and keeping me here doing this. It would seriously break my heart if at some point I just had to call it a day and stop doing videos like we're doing here trying to raise exposure, trying to help these families that are in these terrible situations. So a big thank you and virtual hug from me to all my wonderful supporters on Patreon and PayPal. And let me finish this video so I can go do some more good and make a donation right now. Take care, everyone. I'll see you back here on Friday with a brand new episode of Brain Scratch on the Lord and Arts channel.